Hello, and welcome to this presentation of the STM32 Independent Watchdog. It covers the main features of this peripheral, which can be used either as a watchdog to reset the device when a problem occurs, or as a free-running timer for application timeout management. The Independent Watchdog is used to detect and resolve malfunctions due to software failures. It triggers a reset sequence when it is not refreshed within the expected time window. Since its clock is an independent 32 kHz low-speed internal RC oscillator, or LSI, it remains active even if the main clock fails. Once enabled, it forces the activation of the low-speed internal oscillator, and it can only be disabled by a reset. One of the main benefits for applications is its ability to run independently from the main clock. The independent watchdog offers a wide range of timeout values from 125 microseconds to 32 seconds. It is clocked by a 32 kHz RC oscillator, which cannot be disabled when the independent watchdog is enabled. It generates a reset when the program timeout value elapses or when a watchdog refresh occurs outside a program time window. This window feature is optional and not present in all independent watchdogs. It is possible to enable automatically the independent watchdog after a system reset. It is possible to define the behavior of the independent watchdog in debug, stop, or standby mode. The independent watchdog registers are located in the core voltage domain, while its functions are in the VDD voltage domain. Two clocks are needed. The APB clock is required in order to access registers. The LSI clock is required for the functional part of the watchdog. This architecture allows the independent watchdog to work even in stop and standby modes. A programmable 8-bit prescaler is used to divide the LSI oscillator frequency. The 12-bit down counter defines the timeout value. The STM32WB microcontroller includes an independent watchdog, or IWDG. The IWDG can be clocked by either LSI1 or LSI2. The IWDG will use whichever is enabled. If both LSI are disabled and the IWDG is enabled, the LSI1 is forced on. Note that LSI1 and LSI2 are both low-power 32 kHz RC oscillators. The IWDG is normally used by the CPU-1. Cortex M4. It is possible to select the hardware or software start via option bytes. It is possible to select if the watchdog will freeze or not when the CPU-1 is in debug or core halted mode. Finally, it is also possible to control the behavior in stop or standby modes. The IWDG performs a system reset handled by the RCC block when a timeout occurs or when the IWDG is refreshed outside the allowed window. This diagram illustrates how the independent watchdog operates. When the down counter reaches zero, the watchdog reset is activated. This happens when the application software did not refresh the window watchdog on time. If the software refreshes the watchdog while the down counter is greater than the value stored in the window register, then a reset is generated as well. To prevent a watchdog reset, the refresh must occur when the down counter value is other than zero and lower than the time window value. The independent watchdog hardware is enabled by the device's option bytes. If the hardware mode is enabled after every system reset, the watchdog automatically loads the counter with 0x FFF and starts to count down. The prescaler is set to zero, providing a division by four on the input clock. To prevent any reset, the key register must be refreshed at regular intervals before the counter reaches zero and within the time window, if this option has been selected. Considering that the LSI1 or LSI2 clock frequencies are at exactly 32 kHz, the application has about 0.5 seconds to refresh the IWDG before the generation of a watchdog reset. 
The IWDG software start is configured in a few steps. The first step is to write the key register with values 0x0000CCCC, which starts the watchdog. Then remove IWDG register protection by writing 0x0000555 to unlock the key. Set the IWDG prescaler in the IWDG PR register by selecting the prescaler divider feeding the counterclock. Write the reload register, IWDG RLR, to define the value to be loaded in the watchdog counter. After accessing the previous registers, it is necessary to wait for the IWDG SR bits to be reset in order to confirm that the registers have been updated. Two options are now available. Enable or disable the IWDG window option. To enable the window option, write the window value in the IWDG WINR register. Otherwise, refresh the counter by writing 0x0000AAAA in the key register to disable the window option. The IWDG time base is pre scaled from the LSI 1 or LSI 2 clock at 32 kHz. The IWDG PR prescaler register can divide the LSI clock frequency by 4 up to 256. The watchdog counter reload value is a 12-bit value written in the IWDG RLR register. A formula can be used to determine the independent watchdog timeout. The independent watchdog time is based on the LSI period and its prescaler, as well as the selected watchdog counter reload value. Note that the microcontroller's Reset and Clock Controller, or RCC, provides registers identifying the source of the reset. In this way, the application can check if a reset is caused by an independent watchdog. The IWDG can be active in all modes, except in shutdown mode. When the STM32WB microcontroller exits from shutdown mode, the IWDG registers are set to their initial values.